are growing his YouTube channel, you are going to allow the algorithm to boost it when you and all of the people around you normalize having him on and presenting him. So other people that don't come from your communities will start subbing to his YouTube channel and they won't see any of that. I think it's honestly a little bit misogynistic, the amount of hate that I'm getting for this uh, in comparison to other male creators. So you're making an accusation and I would like you to substantiate it. I don't think it's okay to make jokes like that. I don't think it's okay to say things like that. I don't give a f what you do on Twitter. So the story that he tells the feminist doesn't match up with what you just said. You drone on for so long, it's so boring, I'm sorry. You're very much being hysterical and overreacting. Can I, can you just, can I please finish your point? No. Finish your point and then. Saying, I don't have a point and cutting me off and you telling me I don't have a have point. One. <laughs> you You're really don't. Okay. And, and you know what, Chad? I have a problem with you too, actually. Sick, evil, disgusting, nasty monsters that need to be murdered. She said that I was very creepy for doing this, and then- I didn't say very creepy. He- I I'm sorry, you're not listening to me and smiling, it's distracting me. I, I, if you had studied psychology, you would know that the Oedipus complex is actually very normal, it's not that weird. Because again, I do think he is a very, very, very bad, um, incompetent advocate. Oh my god, can I please finish a point? Please. Uh, well, I don't understand like what the contention because is here. You're not letting me tell you what the contention is. Okay, tell, tell me, tell me. Okay. Jesus seemed more normal and acceptable for other people to have him on and debate him because- Are we conservatives doesn't... now? Okay. There we go, right. It's all set up my end. So let's just check. Yep, there we go. Let me pop, pop you out. There we go. Right, you're on stream now. Please do not swear. Well, you can swear, but don't say any slurs. Um, Stardust, that's mainly directed at you. Um, yeah, an infamous go. slur sayer here. Exactly. Uh, okay, so there we go. Uh, right, so I'll just give a quick introduction, um, and then I'll kind of hand it over to you, and we'll uh, we'll figure this out. I'll just sort of lay out some ground rules. I don't really have any ground rules, to be honest, but just so we can keep this as productive as possible. Um, obviously, there's been some drama recently. Um, I think that, like, Mr. Girl has been quite a controversial figure in the Twitch space. Um, I don't think that's unfair to say. And there's lots of discussions about platforming him, the merits of platforming him, the dangers of platforming him, and so on and so on and so on. Um, I think that Merrick has been quite a vocal critic on Twitter in regards to this, and that has led to some friction um, between the two of you. So I just thought it would be good to get you two together and kind of have an open discussion and see where we go. Hoping it's going to be productive. Appreciate there might be some frustration. I'm happy for that to be aired, but if it goes too far off of the track, I'll bring it back round, okay? Um, so I'll just interject if I feel things are getting a bit too off off in the, uh, the, the, the track, so to speak. So yeah, um, but I want to keep it as open as possible and let you two kind of decide where the conversation goes. Um, that's it, really. What I'd say initially is probably easiest is, is if I throw it over to Merrick first, because I think um, you can maybe just introduce some of the contention and issues that you've got, and that allows Stardust to respond, and it should be quite a nice backwards and forwards from there, okay? Sure, that's fine. Um, I guess the reason why we are here is that Stardust is upset that um, I took some screenshots of what people were saying in her chat during her interview with Mr. Girl, and that I was also sent some screenshots of things that her chat was saying during her... Actually, I wouldn't even say... Oh, yeah, I guess interview. Um, so, you know, I was... Uh, I was talking about how I, I don't really think that this is someone that needs to be platformed. Um, and I was explicitly asked, I was explicitly asked um, by someone sort of incredulous at the idea that anyone thinks that he is um, anything other than reprehensible. So this was posited to me in kind of like a, you know, you're making a big deal about this. Everyone thinks he's very gross. No one thinks he has anything interesting to say. You're, you know, you're very much being hysterical and overreacting was kind of the implication, um, especially because it was posited from someone who anytime I tweet anything, they always have to challenge me and undermine me. So to this person, I was like, listen, I don't want to have a long back and forth with you. So I found... Um, and was given some images of people talking about how awesome he is, how funny he is, how honest he is, and just how based and like super cool he is. So um, I blurred out all of the names of all of the people in the chat. Um, and I, I was like, here, look, like this is, you know, this is what's happening right now. This is kind of what people are saying about this person. This is a very warm, um, very, very positive reception. And I suppose Stardust took that as a very, very personal attack on her. She said that I was very creepy for doing this. And then- I didn't now say very creepy, but uh, no, I just said it was, I, I didn't take it that personally. What, quote, um, 
and I quote tweeted it. Yes, I did. And I said that um, it's a little bit creepy that you are taking screenshots of my chat, especially knowing that you're not looking at the interview um, while it's going on. So that's what's creepy to me. I I was watching the interview. Okay. All right. So it's it's not not creepy. It does seem like this has kind of really upset you, especially because you also took the chance uh, yesterday to take very personal jabs at me over the the Steven thing. Wait, so, what personal jabs did I take at you? Well, he was very blatantly attacking me and talking like saying that I like don't have any integrity and I stand for nothing. And this is what he how does about. what he does it, reflect on me? You commented and said, yeah, same here. I agree when I'm the subject that's being discussed. Right. And because of your screenshots, I've been dealing with like a bunch of people on Twitter. Now I can handle it. I've dealt with worse, but it's just a little bit hypocritical for you to sit there and say, oh, how could people, um, how could people engage in this kind of toxic mobbing and all of that when I am the subject of toxic mobbing right now? I don't see how anything I did is negative towards you. I didn't have, like, I didn't say anything bad about you. Um, I don't actually. Uh, you screenshotted really- my my chat, which it, which I I don't know, I don't know how you can interpret that in any other way. I don't actually think that you having him on is the end of the world. I don't think it makes you a bad person. I didn't say anything negative about you. Um, I don't really think that what you did was all that bad. I don't think that you've necessarily even looked into a lot of his chat. Um, I didn't shit talk you. I haven't encouraged anyone to shit talk you i didn't see anyone on my end shit talking you so this does seem to be i've kind of been over- getting i like anytime i check twitter i can't keep track of the notifications at this point um which is and- fine again i can handle it i just think it's hypocritical for you to be saying that mobbing is so bad and yet you are here screenshotting my chat tweeting out and complaining about my chat um, whether you say that that's personal or not, it seems a little bit per- personal. Um, and um, I mean, that's fine. If it, Just own up to it. <laughs> that's all. I have not seen any negativity directed at you. I haven't seen it on my end. If you do have things that you know come from people that follow me or are in my community or came from that post, um, I would very much like you to send it to me. Um, but I don't really think that this is really the point because I'm more than happy to tell people not to say anything to you, to apologize to you. Um, if things did come from people who I surround myself with, then I do apologize to you because- Oh yeah, I got waves of harassment from your screenshots, so. Okay, yeah. well, that was very clearly not my intent. I never said anything negative about you. Mm-hmm. Um, I really don't think that you doing this is the end of the world. Um, time and time and time again, I have been very vocal about like, if someone is doing an action we don't like, we don't attack that person. We talk about the action and we talk about ideas. So I've gone really above and beyond um, time and time and time and time and time again. Um, have like you? over the past year. Yes, ma'am, I have. So I've gone over and above time and time again over the past year to talk about how if we have a problem with something, we talk about what the problem is. So if there are people that you can show me that came from my community or came from my chat, I would love for you to privately DM me that because I would like to personally handle that. I don't think you deserve to be mobbed, but I do think that there is a conversation that we do need to have about whether it's okay to platform this person. So I don't think that it's okay to say that I'm sending mobs to harass you when I'm saying it's not okay to platform this person because that's a valid discussion to have and it's an okay thing that I have a problem with. It's completely okay that I have a problem with that. And yeah, of course. Okay you can have a problem. You can have a problem with who I platform. That's then why are you saying I'm sending mobs of harassment to you and I'm hypocritical? You are sending. Okay, so maybe that was not your intention. Whether you intend it or not, that is what you actually inflict upon other people when you screenshot a chat and you start commenting about, you know, look at all these people in Stardust chat who are being affectionate and all of this to him. Um, what do you think that the response is going to be when you have how many followers do you have on Twitter? 36K or something? And I'm, I'm like a 5K person? No, no, that's not even close. Okay, what, what is it then? I think I have like 13 or something. Okay, like 13K. Okay, still 13K. You've got a lot of followers, a lot of engagement on Twitter. You must know this. Um, and when you tweet out a screen, a bunch of screenshots of my chat, and I'm not aware if you're even participating in the in the chat or if you're even participating in watching the interview, um, then yes, people. First off, for me, that feels a little weird. 
I mean, it is what it is. It's the internet. But then, yes, whether you intend to or not, that sends mobs up my way. Now, again, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. I've dealt with worse. But Mm, I still think... Wait, wait, wait. I'm not finished. I'm not finished, okay? Why... Why would you make this assertion about how mobbing is so bad, so it's so horrible that this person got mobbed when you, on a uh, what it seems like a daily basis, do things that that um, that inflict mobs upon other people? I do this on a daily basis. I mean, that's what it seems like. Why does it seem that way? Uh, it, I am not the first person that I've seen you do this with, where you who call somebody out publicly. Who are the? Other I mean, what about Hans? Do you understand the situation that happened with Hans? Would you like to tell us? Um, I don't really care about the situation with Hans. I don't really care about a- every situation well, that happens with you, but it's situation. every day with you. I'm pretty sure it's every day with you. And, I, you know, it's fine. I just do what you want on the internet. Just don't complain about it. So you're making an accusation, and I would like you to substantiate it. Substantiate it? Okay. Uh, give me a second here. So you don't actually know the details then? You have to look it up? No, um, I can I- provide screenshots if you'd like, no, but no, I don't no. have everything I don't no. have everything in front of me. Okay, so I would like you to talk through the situation with Hans. And you can still okay. see him afterwards. Okay, yeah. So um, from what I can tell is Hans and Celine had some back and forth on Twitter. And okay. I do believe that you called him out. Um, and he seems to think that you think he's a misogynist. So here's what happened. Hans and Celine have had a long back and forth that I don't really know much about. Um, I don't see Celine's tweets, and I haven't really seen a lot of Hans going back and forth with her. So what I did see was someone telling Hans, hey, I don't really think it was okay that you held the $300 over Celine's head. This is a trans teenage girl. And he said, I don't care what you think. Because is she a teenager? Yes. So he, to a trans teenage girl, he said, your opinion is worth as much to me as you as a person. So like, you're worthless. He basically said, you are worthless to me as a person. And 11 hours go by, and this is still up. And I was like, hey, Hans, this is really awful to say to someone. You know, I I don't think that this is the way to go about it. So he responds negatively. And I realized very quickly, oh, this is not going the direction that I think is going to be good. So I DM him privately. And then Mm -hmm. he tells me to fuck off and proceeds Mm -hmm. to send a million messages about how I'm a horrible person. I'm a piece of shit. He fucking hates me. Um, I need to do this, that, and the other. I needed to have read about everything for me to go, hey, I think this is a little bit over the line. And then try to privately speak to him in private. First off, she's not a teenager. She's 24, from what I remember. Second off, she's she's 24. Um, from what I can, from what I can tell, she she I I don't know. From what I remember, maybe she's twenty at the most. But I remember her her bio saying twenty four. Um, I'm uh, nineteen years old. I'm sorry. I'm under the impression that she's nineteen years old. Okay. Either way, this is somebody who has harassed multiple people, not just Hans. Really? Ashley yes. has harassed multiple people. Yes. Who Cherry else? Cherry is one of them. Them? Um, uh, Cherry is one of them. She's harassed RGR. She's harassed RGR's significant other. She has, um, uh, um, uh, I'm sorry. You're talking about Celine or Ashley? Yes. Right? Celine. You're talking about Celine. So I'm talking about Ashley. I didn't, okay. I didn't endorse anything that happened with uh, Celine. Celine probably said some shit that wasn't okay. I didn't say anything about his interactions with Celine. Okay. All right. Fine. So I don't think me going, hey, it's probably really bad for you to continue this toxic, angry cycle and lash out at people. It's not good for you internally. It's not good optically. It's really just not good to tell people that they don't have worth as human beings. I don't think that you get to say that I'm sending a mob on people because I was like, hey, this probably isn't a good idea. And then quickly sent a private DM. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, sure. But then there are plenty of other examples. You've, you know, liked tweets that are directly harassing other content creators. I mean, um, I, I just don't think I think it's I still think it's hypocritical. I still think it's hypocritical. Who have I liked tweets harassing other creators? Do you want me to name every single one? 
Yeah, I mean, I think if you're going to sit here and say that I'm this huge cry bully that's harassing people all the time, you should absolutely substantiate those things. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Let me well, just go through the entire history of your entire Twitter history because that's what I do. You're making really serious accusations. So, yes, I think you should be able to at least... Do you think the accusation of pedophilia is serious? I've never accused him of being a pedophile. So Okay, why then why is he such a bad person? Then good. This is the conversation I would like to get into. Thank you. So here's the deal. I didn't come here today to tell you that I think he's a pedophile. I've watched a lot of what he's had to say, and I don't think that he's exclusively attracted to children. Now, we know that he has said on multiple occasions that he is attracted to, I believe he said in the Reddit thread that he was attracted to everyone 12 years old and up and that he stands by that. Um, that, was that was a joke. That was a joke. Okay, if well, you look at Twitter, the context of it, you, it's a joke, yeah. Okay, well, on Twitter today, he was saying that he stands by it. So I don't think that it's okay to make jokes like that, stands for one. by the joke, yeah. Okay, go ahead. He didn't say that it was a joke. So I don't think it's okay to make jokes like that. I don't think it's okay to say things like that. Um, he has told us explicitly in the Cuties uh, video that he was attracted to the 11-year-olds in some contexts. Um, he has said that he believes that everyone is sort of attracted to children in some way or another. Um, I think that that's like a really harmful thing to say. He says this in his video, Ugh, pedophiles are sick and evil. He claims that everyone is slightly attracted to children and it's a scale. Um, so, so I think that, you know, saying things like this doesn't mean that he's exclusively attracted to children, but I do think that these are really problematic things. So I didn't come here to say, oh, he's a pedophile, and I certainly don't think that he's hurt children. Um, I don't believe that there's any evidence of that. I don't want, I don't want like the takeaway from any of this to be that I think that or that I'm accusing him of that because I think that that would be really unethical and wrong, right? So I mm -hmm. think my takeaway is that um, he has a lot of really, really bad takes about consent that I think are pretty dangerous. Um, and I also think that he's a really, really awful, completely incompetent advocate for the thing that he claims to care about a lot. Um, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, I also care about this a lot. I do think that instead of saying, oh, we should give pedophiles the bullet, I think that's really fucking problematic. Like when people talk about killing pedophiles or locking them up forever or mm -hmm. they're just- Can you tell me his, his takes on consent that you seem to disagree with? Sure, sure. So he has a video called An Uncomfortable Interview with a Feminist. And I have pulled all of the quotes and the timestamps. I have also pulled, um, I've also clipped it all. So mm -hmm. there's one particular exchange that I think is pretty inappropriate and pretty damning. He tells the story about how he technically rapes the woman, but because he assumed that when she said no, she meant yes. And then they continued to have sex afterwards. It's not really that... It's not really rape in his mind. It's not like a bad rape. I'll, I'll never be like unable to like, oh, I was just so horny. I had to do that. Mm -hmm. That's never been me. But it felt like um, something about the way she was looking at me gave me the sense that it was like a game and, she, and that's what I was supposed to do. I feel like from my end, consent checking in. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, so. It was um, definitely technically mm -hmm. rape, like for sure. But she reacted really well to it, and um, you know we you know, talked more afterward. I also sent her the video, um, mm -hmm. and um, she didn't press charges. Although she still could, if you change your mind. Um, but. Let's see, at 43 minutes and five seconds, he says, oh, I'm sorry, let's start at 42 minutes and 14 seconds. He says, even if you think you don't want to have sex, there's probably always a part of you that does. There are times when people say no, but mean yes. There are times where people say yes, but mean no. And even if you think you want to have sex, there's always part of you that probably doesn't. And even if you think you don't want to have sex, there's always part of you that probably does. At 43 minutes and five seconds, he says, I just met that woman two hours earlier. So I was definitely rolling the dice. Yes, the, the idea that I was putting forth is that um, consent, it's called, it was called consent is complicated. Just the idea that 
a simple yes or no it legally is fine right. um but interpersonally if you're humanistically if you're if you're em if you have empathy for another person just because they said yes doesn't mean that they necessarily want to have sex with you on balance if you can get someone to say yes you're legally covered but ethically and psychologically you're not really and you're not really ever covered and just because right. someone says no especially if you know them better I just met that woman like two hours earlier so I definitely was rolling the dice but if if you know someone well people so, say no all the time don't mean it so in consent culture yeah, so it's an anti-consent culture video. At right. 43 minutes and 19 seconds, he says, yeah, so it's an anti-consent culture video. And then at 43 minutes and 38 seconds, um, he says... Oh, wait, I didn't put the actual timestamp for this. So um, he's talking to the, the feminist that he's interviewing, and she says, but... That's what I'm saying. In consent culture, no is always no, unless you've negotiated. And then he cuts her off and he says, yeah, yeah, I know. And then they both kind of like really awkwardly are like, but, but, but at each other. So that fills up a couple of seconds. Um, and then she kind of like sympathetically leans in and she's like, but you know, it's hard to, it's hard to end. Like it's, it's hard mm -hmm. to kind of stop yourself essentially. Um, and he looks at her and he goes, no, but it's boring. And she says, uh, you know, he can see that she's really hesitant. So he goes, listen, listen, this video was for people who already understand consent. Um, and then she goes, well, is boring worth assaulting someone? Um, she says this at 44 minutes and 10 seconds. And he immediately responds, yes. I mean, that's to me. Yes, that's the thing. You have to trade safety for excitement. No is always no, unless you've negotiated, unless you specifically Yeah, yeah, have yeah, I know, I know. No, 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 so but, but that's what I, I'm saying, like... I, I know, but that's... But it's hard, and... It's, that's boring. I understand. You agree? No. You think that's exciting? It took me some getting used to because I was raised to be like spur of the moment, passionate, throw people. Okay, so again, However, so this, so the video isn't for people who have never said no, right? It's for people who understand the consent culture thing, and, right? And, but, and it's it's and it's saying like that, even that, like, okay, you have. Is boring worth assaulting someone? Yes, I mean that's to me. Yes, that's the that's the thing is like it how you have to trade safety for excitement it's exciting the first time a girl ever touched okay. me so this is really bad can well can i explain to you why i think that this is really bad yeah okay so to me this is really bad and i mean we can just look at the statements on the surface right um let's see there's always a part of you even if you think you don't want to have sex, there's always a part of you, probably always a part of you that does. Um, I don't think that it's okay to assume this about other people. I don't think that that's um, a mindset that it's okay to let yourself get into. And then he says, I just met that woman two hours earlier, so I was definitely rolling the dice. So we're talking about a situation where she- Do you know the entire story of I'm that about, woman? I'm about to tell it. So we're talking okay. about- a where she was sitting on top of him they met on tender she was sitting on top of him and she says no i'm not ready and he said that from the look in her eye his interpretation was that she wanted him to ignore that and just go for Welcome it to so Nation. then he afterwards Matt he says i just met that woman two hours earlier so i was definitely rolling the dice so to me this is really scary that you don't know someone at all and you're in a situation where if you do a certain action, you are going to sexually assault them. Um, and you are completely okay with rolling the dice for that person that so you met two hours you earlier. You know that she was completely naked and he was already partly inside her when that happened, right? So the story that he tells the feminist doesn't match up with what you just said. Okay, so yes. And then the story um, on your stream, I don't believe matches with that as well either. Um, he was, um, from what I remember, she was, they were both naked. She was on top of him. And, um, 
he, he was just barely in, I guess, he, a little he bit. And she said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what did you say? So actually someone in your chat summarized it. Someone in your chat said he was about to enter her, but he hadn't yet. And he actually on your stream reads that comment and agrees with it and says, yes, that was what, what happened. Okay, well, either way, they're both naked, right? Okay. She is on top of him and okay. she says, I'm not ready yet. Okay. But they they continue anyways, so right? So he makes the decision for them to continue anyway. Yeah, and sometimes in whether you want to acknowledge it or not, and sometimes in sexual relations, um, uh, people will rely on the other person to make the first step. Sure. I don't think that this is okay to do with a tender date that you just met two hours earlier and you haven't talked about any of this with. I think well, that that who's see here's the thing like she she wanted to um she made she indicated interest in in meeting up with him later um mm -hmm. but i mean like the thing is like regardless of all of that it's not really my place to say the past judgment and say like hey dude like unless it's like very clearly raped to me it's really it's really not my business to like be like oh well you were both completely naked but you should have still waited um even though she was like directly on top of you that's none of my business like he's telling a story and i don't think i have enough context i don't have enough info to really tell whether he had the right to do that if he in that situation decided to do that then that's that's on him right um, he then goes on to say, yes, it's an anti-consent culture video. Um, and he says, let's see, consent is boring. She says, is boring worth assaulting someone? And he states, yes, I mean, that's to me. Yes, that's the thing. You have to trade safety for excitement. So he, I think it's kind of funny though, but yeah. So he claims to us. We're going to rely on his word here that this woman had a great time and that she mm -hmm. called him afterwards. So let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that um, she said no, but she meant yes. So then they had a great time. Okay. So in that situation, that worked out for him. He took the chance of sexually assaulting someone and it worked out for him. Now, he's also made statements where he See, said- Are you that, really calling that sexual assault? No, you're not letting me get to my point. You're not- oh, I'm trying I, to this to you. You're okay, not, but you said, you said like he's okay with sexually assaulting people or something like that. I, no, I don't know that I would call I, that specific situation sexual assault. Okay, so what I said to you is he is okay with taking the chance of potentially sexually assaulting someone- um, so he says this himself where he says, yes, I mean, to me, that's the thing. You have to trade safety for excitement in a direct response to the question is boring worth assaulting someone. So let's say in this situation, everything happened the way he said it did. That's great. Okay, good. I'm very glad he didn't sexually assault that woman. I, we should give him the benefit of the doubt because that's the way he's telling us this story. Now, the underlying mentality that exists there is what I have the problem with. I don't think that you need to go on YouTube and talk about how you're anti-consent culture. I don't think that you need to go on YouTube and say that like, yeah, I maybe raped someone and the way that I operate, because he's also said this other times before where he felt that other, wom other women in other sexual situations he were in um, were looking at him in a way where based on the, like, the body language or, or the look or whatever, that they wanted him to either rape them or take, him, take them right there without like, it being talked about. So yeah, maybe sometimes you're going to have like, you're going to read that situation correctly, right? So I think that's perfectly valid, but like, especially if you know someone really well and you've talked about how like, no means when I say no in this way, I we're doing some consensual non-consent. That's a kink, right? Consensual non-consent is a kink. Um, and in the BDSM community, you do a lot of communicating. You talk things out beforehand. You figure out what it is that the person wants. You do safe, sane, consensual, I think is the, the mantra that they have. So when you're out there with random people that you're meeting and you're not really talking about how you understand safe, sane, and consensual, 
and you're going on YouTube and you're not delivering the message of like, hey, you need to communicate with people. Hey, it's not okay to roll the dice and maybe sexually assault someone because yes, I mean, that's to me, yes, that's the thing. You have to trade safety for excitement. See, I don't think that you do trade safety for excitement. I don't think that that's okay. And you know what? You actually might be able to have a relationship with someone where they go, here, I'm into consensual non-consent and this is how we can do it, right? Like if you see that I'm having a bad day, maybe we don't do it. If I give you this sign, maybe we do it. If you touch me and I respond in this way, maybe we do it. Maybe you surprise me. But I don't think that it's okay to like... I don't think that it's okay to set this standard for people that you haven't really thoroughly talked this out with. So can, can I tell you a really, really quick story? Is that okay? Yeah, sure. So when I was 13 years old, um, I had a relationship with a man who was 20. And I didn't know that that was wrong. So we were, um, we were in his house. And... I was in his bed and he asked me if I wanted to do something. Now, I thought he was asking me if I wanted to do a completely different thing because I misheard him. So before I knew it, he was taking my virginity and I said, no. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, you, you just said yes. And I mm -hmm. didn't know any better. And I froze up and I got really scared. Um, mm -hmm. And I continued to date that person for six months after that. So I don't think when you sit here and say it's okay to roll the dice, it's okay to roll the dice. And I don't think that for personal reasons. And I also don't think that because you're taking a risk that I think is inherently very selfish and has the potential to be extraordinarily damaging. And then you're going on YouTube and you're not putting any of these qualifiers around it. And you're putting out videos where you act like that's just okay. Um, and you don't know who's watching your videos. You don't know if teenage boys are watching your videos. You don't know if really like people who are in a very weird mental space are watching your videos. You don't know if people who have bad intentions are watching your videos who can then point to your videos afterwards and go, well, see, consent is just really complicated. So I think that you open up this horrible can of worms when you want to normalize anti-consent culture practices. Uh, so I, I have a couple of questions with this. Um, have you looked at any of his other videos on rape? Um, I've watched almost all of his YouTube videos, I think, actually. Okay, cool. So then you would know that there are times when you, um, when you are in a situation where you say yes out of coercion, right? Sure, I think that that's a thing. Yeah, he has a really great video. Um, have you watched the one where it's uh, uh, "Why are women afraid to say no?" Um, I, yeah, I do. I, I think I, I think I did watch that one briefly. Yeah, I thought that was really great. Um, I actually mm -hmm. was really, really surprised at the way that he managed to touch on that topic and to, I thought, handle it with um, a level of insight that I don't think is mm -hmm. is present in a lot of his other videos. I think that one was actually really good. Okay, so you think that that one was good, but that other videos were bad enough to justify having an issue with him being platformed? Yeah, so I think the vast majority of your content is um, not messaging properly when you don't handle your messaging with care, um, when you spread you know, misinformation, when you talk about things that are very much above your pay grade, and when you handle most of your videos very poorly, I don't think one or two is enough for um, an entire community of lefty streamers to decide that they need to boost you and platform you. Um, I do actually want to talk about his views on pedophilia, if you're okay with that. Well, I feel like, I feel like we're, here's the thing, like, I feel like we're not really having a conversation here. Um, if this is a conversation about platforming him and about his views, um, certainly, like, you know, we should be doing that. But I'm really not here to sit through and go line by line on every one of his videos. What I'm here to do is talk in general about why you have a problem with me platforming him and why you seem to think that you're not somehow complicit in the same type of mobbing that you're claiming to be against, right? Um, I, I have, you know, again, I have no problem with what you do. Just be honest about it. 
but I am, I'm really not here to go line by line in every video. Um, so if you have a problem with his views on consent, we can talk about that. I think the overall view on consent is he's just basically saying it is complicated. And I don't find a problem with that because it is complicated. Um, there are plenty of people who say yes, who give consent, who are still raped, right? And there are plenty of people who don't give consent, at least verbally, and are, you know, I guess technically you would call them uh, raped, but they might think differently. Um, also, I would say, what is the difference between me platforming him and other content creators like Vosh and like Destiny I think Vosh should platforming? Have I don't think Vosh should have had him on. I think Vosh okay. made a mistake. I think Vosh uh, needed to have done his homework and he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, after Vosh had Mel on, I really think that that should have kind of been a turning point where he went, why don't we look into like, or like think about what's going to happen when we platform these people. Um, and yeah, I've been pretty vocal about the fact that I don't, I don't think Vosh did the right thing. Okay, fair enough. Um... So, so, okay, you, you feel like um, I'm trying to get into the nitty gritty details of why I have a problem with him and you don't want to get into the details. You want to focus on the big ideas, correct? Uh, I don't think you're trying to get into the nitty gritty. I just think I find it very boring to go line by line in every video. Um, I would rather just talk um, about the actual views that you find problematic being platformed. Um, and I would rather just talk about um, uh, why you seem to have a problem with platform platforming. I personally am not a believer in deplatforming. Um, I, I think it's bullshit. Um, people are going to find an audience no matter what. Um, and I think that I do enough homework and I do enough, um, on my end to make sure that that plat platforming is fine. So, okay. so, um, let's see. I think that his views on consent, um, are very dangerous because he does not go into, um, enough caveats of like, you need to make sure that this is okay with people. I think he's okay with just kind of willy nilly trying to read the body language of anyone as long as you've known them for long enough and that um, he- I don't think he's ever said that though. He explicitly states, um, I knew her for two hours, Good so I was plant. rolling the dice. Just is he saying down. though that y anybody can go and find um, somebody and if their body language indicates that they want it, then they want it. Um, I don't I think, think he's saying that. I, I think, think I think for you to read into that actually is like kind of you're you're kind of coming to a conclusion that's not really there, right? Well, I don't think that someone has to explicitly say something for that to be the message that comes off from the overall. Okay. Uh, so why is it his responsibility then when he's when he's talking about a personal story to determine that oh this is the message that's going to get out? Right. I mean, I could say like, I like, I, I like vanilla ice cream. I don't like chocolate ice cream. And somebody could take some crazy, um, some crazy conclusion from that. Am I responsible for their crazy conclusion? Talking about ice cream, we're talking about rape. Right. So we're talking about rape. We're talking about a situation in which he and the person he was with had you know, you said they met two hours before, and yes, um, they they did, but they seem to have known each other well enough that they were comfortable in, enough with each other to engage in that activity. Um, so I don't see why his personal story and and it, well, anyways, I I don't see why his personal story needs to be like accountable for every single bad interpretation that somebody might have over it. It's not actually a bad interpretation that I have. He actually says consent culture is boring and that you have to trade safety for excitement. So this is my my problem. He explicitly says this. He says this at 44 minutes and 10 seconds. And I know you I said, understand. You said that you said that before. I, right. I think it's boring too. Okay, so like, you're not- I think it's funny. I think it's not, a joke. But I mean, I honestly, like it is. It is boring. And honestly, I think we need to have a more nuanced conversation about it. Right, you're not letting me explain. Well, anything. you explain for like how long? For like ten minutes before. Right. So I, I mean, I guess you're just not engaging with my points. Then you're like, well, why does his personal story have to matter? But the thing is, the content that you put out 
um, ripples throughout, people see that, right? So Mm -hmm. there's a whole large meta conversation that we're all having. Everyone who gets online and talks about consent culture, what they say then becomes part of the like society-wide conversation that we're having. So I have a problem when the messages that you put out into that society-wide conversation we're having are that you think that we need to trade safety for excitement and that it's okay that you rolled the dice with someone that you had just met because then you influence other people to perform similar actions because you don't ta- think that's his okay. intent though. Does it, it does, does matter. It... You didn't I care mean... what my intent was. Yeah. You, well, the well, argument sure. earlier. No, hold on. you need to listen to me right now because you just made the argument earlier that regardless of my intent, my actions by screenshotting your chat had a negative effect on you. So right here, right now, I don't think he's an evil person, but his intent does not have any bearing on whether this piece of media will influence other people to say that, you know what, maybe I don't need to check in very much. Maybe I can roll the dice. That's dangerous. Okay. Welcome. So Show what I'm going to say to you is, again, I don't give a fuck what you do on Twitter because I've dealt with worse. And I said before that, wait, wait a minute. Okay. I said before that you can, you, you can do whatever you want. If you want to send a mob after me, I don't give a fuck. I'm just saying, don't be a hypocrite about it when you talk about it. Okay. That's, that's all I'm going to say is when, don't be a hypocrite about what you say uh, and what you do. Okay. When you say, oh, mobbing is so bad, but you actually engage in it. Secondly, um, I would say that um, when it comes to these conversations, personal things and his personal opinion, I don't think necessarily him having a conversation about what consent is and, and whether consent is really the measure we need to be using, like verbal consent needs, is, the, is the measure that we should be using um, all the time. Um, he, I mean, he's had plenty of discussions about friends who've been raped. Um, He's had plenty of discussions on this channel about other dodgy areas of sexual interaction. And I think that is his thing. His thing is having these nuanced conversations. I I don't think that's a bad thing. You can take away whatever message you want from it. But again, anybody can take any message away from it. Um, I could take away the message that... um, I don't know. I'll come... I can come up with something crazy. But I, I just feel like... I, first off, why I should be able to platform who I want to, especially if I'm engaging in a nuanced conversation with them, which I believe I did. And I stand by, I think that interview is one of the best interviews I have ever done. I think it's one of the best pieces of content on my channel. um, And I don't regret it. And I never will regret it. Um, His his, um, views on pedophilia may be uncomfortable, may be very, you know, problematic for some people. But for me, I think that he um, is having, a, again, a nuanced conversation with people. It, you're, the, the predator is not going to be the creepy, skeezy guy um, who's in the alley. It's going to be somebody you know, right? There's going to, like, the, if we look at predators as this stranger, this foreign person, we're not going to be effective in actually combating child um, predators. We need to know who they are, right? We need to realize that they can literally be anybody. They could be your dad. They could be your uncle. They could be your brother. They could be your friend. You know, they can be somebody that you really trusted, right? And they can still be a predator. So I don't think that his messaging is bad. I think maybe he has, he's not the best at optics, but I think that um, he's having very important conversations, and I really value those. Um, that he needs to be, I don't know. I haven't looked into um, any of the studies or any of the evidence about whether deplatforming works or not. Um, so I'm not willing to get on here and say, oh, we need to deplatform him because, like, f- like, fully and completely off of YouTube, because. I just haven't done the reading. So I don't think that it would be responsible for me to make a claim about that one way or the other, whether he needs to be on YouTube. Now, I do have a problem with um, him basically being given a media tour throughout the left Twitch sphere, um, because again, I do think he is a very, very, very bad, um, incompetent advocate. 
Um, you said that he's having nuanced conversations, but I don't think that there's anything nuanced about simply saying that consent culture bores you. I think that if in Wait, that interview- I thought this whole thing was about platforming, about me platforming him. Like that was your whole issue, right? You were screenshotting my chat while I had him on my show, right? So then you, what is the problem if it's not about me platforming him? Deplatforming? So deplatforming would be like completely taking him off all of the Okay, internet. so, so then, the, okay, so maybe I used the wrong word. However, everything that I said before still stands with me platforming him specifically. So why should I specifically not platform him when I think that I'm having a valuable conversation with him? So I was trying to get into that. So he, you say that he's having these nuanced conversations that are very important, but I don't think that the conversations he's having are nuanced. I don't think that at all, actually. I think it's very much the opposite. Um, so I think that when you have a video on your channel where you talk about how you find consent culture to be boring and how you rolled the dice with someone and that you could have potentially assaulted and you just did it, um, but then you don't talk about like, yeah, I think a lot of people have this feeling that, you know, the lines are very Is that blue. not the point of me interviewing him? Is it? Is that not the point of me interviewing him? Like, how am I responsible for every single video that he puts out when I'm having an interview with him and I'm having a nuanced conversation with him? It's me. Me and him having a nuanced conversation. Can I, can you just, can I please finish a point? No, because you're, you're not addressing my question. I, I, I will be addressing you it. Were, you were not addressing it. You were still going back to the same video, which has nothing to do with me specifically platforming him okay. and me specifically having a nuanced conversation about rape and about incest and about abuse with him. Okay, okay. it seems like we just maybe reached so, a bit of an impasse here because it feels, like, it feels like, Merrick, you want to talk a bit about maybe some of the videos that you started, and some of the concerns you've got there. And it seems like Stardust, you want to focus more so on, um, you know... Yes, because the, the initial, the initial, con um, the initial oh conflict was over me platforming him and her screenshotting my chat while I was interviewing him. It's not about his YouTube channel. It was about specifically me platforming him platforming him is bad is because of the videos partially because of the videos that are on his youtube channel if i have him on my show and he elaborates on them with me is that not meaningful when you have him on and you drive you drive a lot of reasons. subscribers to we him it's going to one, boost him right in the algorithm Second and it's going to have a bunch of people who didn't watch your interviews with him find him and find his content so this is what i was trying to build the okay. foundation up to talk into right and he not has way more youtube subscribers than i do um i he i highly doubt that my i highly doubt that my interviewing him is going to have that much effect on him he's um he's as far as like content creators go he's much bigger than me so if anything he's platforming me <laughs> so you you are normalizing having him doing the rounds through Lefty Twitch. It How am I normal? I'm not even part of Lefty Twitch. You guys don't consider me part of Lefty Twitch. I'm liberal. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I'm using Lefty in the American sense because we, I'm in America because we're talking to all kinds of audiences right now. So I'm using okay. the broad general term. Okay, I, I don't care about lefty Twitch, okay? This is just virtue signaling. I am, um, I, me having him on my platform, I, I, first off, lefty Twitch never gave a fuck about me, so I don't give a fuck about them, okay? Secondly, um, uh, I have the right to have uh, anybody that I want on my channel, I will have a nuanced conversation with them. And I think it's a little bit disrespectful that you would think that me having him on my channel and the fact that people liked him in my chat is somehow an indicator of us having an irresponsible conversation. I mean, you yourself even liked one of his videos on the YouTube, right? So again, I, I think it's I think it's disrespectful. I think that it's um, I think it's honestly a little bit misogynistic the amount of hate that I'm getting for this in comparison to other male creators. Um, and I think that um, I think it's bullshit. I think it's bullshit. Okay. So. so 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 here's the deal. 
whether you think that you're part of lefty and liberal Twitch or not doesn't matter. And you're saying that your small contribution does not have an effect on all of the people who exist in lefty and liberal Twitch, seeing a bunch of people having him on and normalizing that when bunch earlier, people. when earlier, what's you a bunch of people to you? Hunter Avalon is going to have him on now. Hans was talking about having him on. Destiny had him on. How many people have had him on period right now? I believe, from what I know so far, it's Vosh, Destiny, and you. Exactly. Right. Three no, people. Can you, you can't let me make a point. Well, Why? because you're not, yeah, you're, you're okay, not. Well, let, let's, let, let's, sorry, let's, okay, Merrick, finish your point and then. Saying I don't have a point and cutting me off and you telling me I don't have a have point. One. You you're really don't. Listening. I am listening. Listen you drone on for so long. It's so boring. I'm sorry. It's okay. so boring. Right. Let's, uh, let's just. Bring it down a bit, okay? Let's bring the temperature down, okay? And, and you know what, Chad? I have a problem with you too, actually. Why? What's so, that? Uh, yeah, I have a problem with you too because you have the nerve. You have the fucking nerve uh -oh. to question me about my interview without even watching it. Like, what the fuck's wrong with you? Why? Uh -oh. Hey. Well, I just thought it'd be good content. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. That's it. Um, I mean, well, I don't think I was that harsh on you about it, was I? Uh, well, I don't care if you're harsh on me. You don't have it, you don't have the respect to actually look at my fucking content before you question me on it. I didn't have time to watch it, unfortunately, before okay. we spoke. Okay, all right. Well, maybe you should have watched it. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, we could we could speak about that, but obviously, you know, we're not here to debate right now. Mhm. Mm okay. I appreciate the honesty. Okay. Yep. Okay, Beric, what are you saying? Okay, so. I find a lot of the content on his YouTube to be very objectionable. I think that you drive traffic to it, and I think that you make it seem more normal and acceptable for other people to have him on and debate him. Because Are we conservatives now? Okay. I don't think that he's a good advocate, and I think that when you have him on and you don't bring up that he's a good advocate and your chat loves him, that drives a lot of people to his channel. And not just you, but you're a piece of the puzzle. Now, earlier, you told me that I was just a piece of the puzzle and I needed to own that. So now I'm telling you, you are a piece of the puzzle, and I think it's not good, and I think that right now in this moment, you should own that. If you think sure, that what you're I will own own that i'm a piece of the puzzle but i don't find his content objectionable i think that he's a good content creator i think that his videos are great i think they're excellent quality i think he explores topics in a very uncomfortable way and i think it makes people scared and i think that's a good thing um so yeah i will always own up to it and you know what i will continue to own up to that interview being one of the best pieces of content that i've made on my channel so, so let's talk about your interview with him then so he says at one point, he's talking about people who roofie other people. He says that, let's see, um, I just need to get her to loosen up. I need to get her to the point where she wants to have sex, which is obviously completely, completely rape. That's not murky to me at all. But in the mind of the rapist, imagine, I don't know, I, I imagine, I don't know. I've never talked to someone who roofied someone before. So I don't know. But my guess is that they rationalize it somehow. So he said this, and on its face, I don't think that it's bad. I think it's good that he says, yes, this is obviously rape. But then he talks about the intentions of rapists, and you don't really push back on that. And then he says, even when it's violent, it's helpful for us to step into what that person was thinking. So yeah, it's like, I think I, it is. A oh my God, can I please finish a point? Please. Uh, well, I don't understand like what the contention because is here. You're not letting me tell you what the contention is. Okay, tell, tell me, tell me. Okay. Jesus. Okay. So I think it's good that he acknowledges that that's rape. That's very good that he says that. But then this is sort of indicative of this pattern that follows throughout his entire conversation of you with you, where it's just this conjecture that he brings up. I think that this is harmful, where he says, I don't know, I've never talked to someone who roofied someone before, but my guess is that they rationalize it. And then he says, even when it's violent, it's helpful for us to step into what that person is thinking. So I can see where he's trying to come at this from, but it's this pattern of conjecture. He brings it up again when he says 
being sexually attracted to your child on some level, I don't think is that weird. And you did push back against that. And that was good. But then he goes into this weird math game with you where he tries to get you to say how many people are sexually attracted to their children. And he, you just guess a number. It's like 10 to 15 percent or or people who who, uh, sexually molest their children, I believe. And then you guess 10 to 15 percent. And then he goes, "Okay, but how many people outside of that are actually attracted to their children and are not molesting them? And you go, well, it's probably 10 percent of people that have sexual feelings towards their like sexual attraction towards their kids that actually act on it. And then you guys have this long conversation about how, wow, a lot of people are actually probably sexually attracted to their children. So my problem- How long is this point? It shouldn't matter. My problem- Well, it does matter because, uh, like, I, I feel like whenever you're going on a point, it's not really a point. It's just continue. It's like a run-on sentence. When you talk about this sort of really serious thing with this level of flippancy and conjecture, I think that this is really harmful because- I don't think it's harmful. If I can, if I can explain my point of view on this, I think him stepping into the mind of a rapist actually makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I think when you, um, a lot of people, the, and now this is not everybody, but a lot of people who, who experience trauma want to understand why uh, and how that person who inflicted that trauma upon them came to that, right? I don't think that's necessarily a harmful thing. I don't see why it's wrong for him to say, um, if we think about somebody who roofies somebody, or if we think about from the perspective of of even, um, what's his name, the 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 gymnast coach, not coach, um, the Very gymnast, uh, Larry yeah, Larry, Nis- Larry, whatever his name is. Right. I don't think that there's necessarily harm in trying to figure out why people think the way that they do right um i think that uh that that's an integral part of trying to solve a problem this is a pattern that exists across the conversations he has with creators and the content that he makes on his youtube um, of just conjecture and when you're just conjecturing things about a really serious topic that destroys people's lives and impacts children permanently and forever i think that's a marker of extraordinarily incompetent advocacy So there actually is information about the number of people who molest children who report as being pedophiles. Um, There is a, there's all kinds of uh, actual information that I actually went out and collected about this, but Mm -hmm. he didn't reference any of it on your stream and you didn't push back to any of it. You guys had this whole back and forth about how 150% of people, and then you said, no, wait, you wanted to change it from 15 to 10. He did the Um, math wrong there. I wasn't going to, you know, it was just like a, casual conversation um i wasn't going to like get into i guess the uh these are not specifically these are not well wait we we were just okay 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 let's let us make a point let's let us make a point and then respond okay um okay i don't think that us having a conversation about this and maybe speculating on some of the stuff from our own perspective and putting ourselves in other people's shoes is necessarily a bad thing. I understand that there are real stats about this. Um, and I have looked up some of the stats, though I can't remember all of them off the top of my head. Um, but I still do not think that that uh, that there needs to be this um when we're having an informal conversation that this needs to be this this level of precision that you're asking from me um when we're having an informal conversation we're both talking from the point of view from trauma and we're both trying to step into the into the space of what a um what the predator is thinking and, and where their brain is at, I don't think there's any way to engage in that without it being at least, you know, some speculation. There's no way to engage in that without it being some speculation. Um, yes, the, the, the math thingy was silly, and, um, and you know, it's whatever. Um, but um, I did push back on him saying that it's, it, it might be normal, Though I don't think it's necessarily him um, saying something necessarily problematic in that situation. Um, 
I, I, I disagree with it. I disagree with it, this idea of it being normal um, to have some sort of attraction to your children. But um, the reason that he's bringing that up is, you know, his own experience. And maybe he's trying to understand it from his own experience, right? His own point of view. I think that if we try, it's again, just trying to understand why somebody would like inflict that on somebody else speaks about this with an air of authority and then he spreads misinformation do you remember when what's he an said, air of authority the what manner, do you mean by like air of thor air of authority the manner in which he speaks so he, uh, how do you uh, determine when somebody's speaking with an air of authority when i don't know something i say when i'm going to talk about it i preface it with listen I don't know about this. I'm not going to guess. Like when I said, I didn't come here to say that he's a pedophile because I don't think he is. When I said, I don't understand the, the studies about deplatforming, I haven't read them yet, so I'm not here to make a firm claim about it, right? So I'm mm -hmm. not speaking with authority about deplatforming because I understand that I don't know very much about this. He doesn't do you think I, saying I think is, do you think that saying I think is, a, is speaking with authority or it's just saying I think? I think it's his tone of voice. I think it's that he doesn't talk about how he doesn't know what he's talking about. I think it's that he makes statements and claims that he's acting like are true. I think there's a lot of things that we can look at with this. But the most important thing here is that he went on your stream and he said that if you had studied psychology, you would know that the Oedipus complex is actually very normal. It's not that weird. Well, this is not true. It's been mm -hmm. pretty thoroughly debunked, the idea that this is normal. There's very, very little evidence to indicate that this actually exists in real life. If you would like, okay. I can show you the studies that I have. I, I actually know. I, I am aware that um, the, the Oedipus complex is not really a thing. However, I think that it's important to remember that he was last in college. Like, he's 36. He was last in college more than a decade ago. So at the, he's going to be at, talking about these things. He needs to know what he's talking about. Does he? It's Twitch. Yes. 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 If you are going what are you out talking there, about, you can you can be on Twitch and especially in an informal conversation. Again, l let me remind you, it was informal. We're no, neither one of us were claiming authority in an informal conversation where majority of it is us speculating on what could possibly be the reason for an abuser being the way that they are and doing the things that they do that um that yeah maybe it's not really important to me to, that he has a, this authority or has you know all of these facts in front of him we're having a conversation about our feelings and about our history and about how we feel um and how and why we are so um fixated on a subject that was the point of my interview. It wasn't to make some, some, you know, claim about the facts of sexual assault. The point of my interview was to get his history, to get his perspective and get why he was fixated on it. Because I felt looking at his videos, I understood why he was fixated on it. I felt like I understood because I've been fixated on things and I, I, I get it. Um, so no, I disagree. I don't think it's that important when I, that was the, the whole aim of my fucking interview and us speculating on multiplying percentages and being wildly incorrect about how we're, um, mul multiplying percentages is, is really not that important to me. What was important to me was relating on that level, on that human level an advocate for pedophilia or pedophiles essentially right he wants people to treat them better he makes videos advocating that we should he has a video called um, pedophilia is sick and evil where he very very angrily talks about how um, people are not compassionate enough towards pedophiles you know about this video correct mm -hmm. right so he considers himself an advocate for these things and i also think that pedophiles are not sick evil disgusting nasty monsters that need to be murdered so i care about this and he says there's one line in this video of his where he says they should get therapy to work on the other problems in their life right so he I i'm sorry you're not listening to me and smiling it's distracting me i, I uh, no i am i'm listening i'm listening okay 
Um, so he talks about like how we should have child sex robots or we should have like simulated child porn. And then he, he didn't like, he doesn't actually talk about the institutions and the studies that are shown that actually talk about things that help offenders. And then he comes on your stream and he says things like, I don't buy that. I know that's the narrative that rape isn't about sex. It's about power. I don't buy that. I know that the narrative that rape isn't about sex, it's about power, but I don't buy that. I think rape is, is. I think the main characterization is the main marker of rape is a lack of inhibition. I think everyone wants to rape other people. I don't think, I, I don't think that one is weird at all. Everyone, and then also I quote, everyone wants to rape their own kid. Like you didn't give him pushback on any of these statements. So he he paints himself as this advocate for I'm pedophiles rights, but then he comes on your stream and he says things like this that are not true. This is not true. It's not okay. true that people are sexually attracted to their children. We actually have studies. There's a, there's a, um, uh, in Germany, in Berlin, there is an institution that is doing a large amount of work with trying to rehabilitate pedophiles and trying to understand them, trying to understand the things that make them tick. He doesn't talk about any of this. He comes on your stream and it's entirely conjecture. And again, this drives That people. was the point of it. That was it's the point. Of it. I feel like you're missing the point. The point it's of my not interview wait, wait, was not wait, 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 to go let's start us, let's start us respond. Let's start us one. Start us go on. Yeah, no. Again, you seem to not be understanding that the point of my interview was not about going over facts and going over what exactly is is what. Okay, the point of my interview with him was again connecting on a human level, understanding why we're fixated on something, and in relating on that. Um, yes, we may have been wrong about certain things. But um, it definitely was not the focus of it. The focus of our, our chat was specifically about him and his history and his, um, and his emotions around that history. Um, I feel like you're expecting this academic level of conversation from us, and that was not our intent at all. And anybody who knows my content knows that, that if I were going to do that, I would indicate that that's what we were doing. But that was not what we were doing. Um, and he's not an advocate for, he's not really like a representative of like, of, of, or doing pedophilia activism or whatever. It's just about not using this language that is so black and white. Um, and he can, he pretty much says this about everything, every issue. It's not about, it's not about like, advocating for one side or the other it's just this black or white language that we're using for everything when we really shouldn't be everybody who is opposite of our views is not somebody who needs to be lined up on the wall right everybody who has a different view from us is not somebody who's evil or a demon yeah i also agree with this but this mm -hmm. is not the problem. My problem is not that he's like, oh, we shouldn't be horrible to people who think different things from us. That's not my problem. My problem is that these are really serious topics. This isn't just an intellectual exercise. This is a, re we're talking about rape and pedophilia. These destroy people's lives. Like this isn't like yeah. this fun, like, haha, let's talk about of this course. is serious. And the conversation- that, That's why we had a serious right? conversation yeah. about our emotions around it. Okay. so. If you're so we to seem to be having a disconnect here, Merrick, because you seem to think that I'm going to have this academic level conversation with him when I'm specifically have I have stated several times that the point of the interview was not to have that type of conversation with him. It was to get his background and to get why he was dedicated to the subject, why he's so fixated on the subject and continues to bring it up. I'm not having that type of conversation with him at that moment in time. I don't think that, um, uh, I don't think that you expecting that level of, 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 uh, uh, that uh, expecting that level of, of pouring over these studies is, is, um, honestly productive to what I was trying to do there. Um, I don't think that we are going to agree on this. I think that you, um, uh, have already moved the goalpost. Uh, like what your initial problem was with people in my chat em empathizing with him and and giving him affection. Um, and now it's about how accurate our stats are. 
It, it's completely changed. So because I don't, I don't really you're get this. You're, 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 no, 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 no. Your, your contention with me was never about the facts. It was never about the facts. It was always about the fact that I platformed him and the fact that my chat was empathizing with him. So I don't give a fuck. You, I don't give a fuck what you have to say from now on, honestly, because you're, you, it's dishonest. It's disingenuous. Honestly, disingenuous. It's not yes, okay it to is. have conversations. That is my point. It's not okay to legitimize someone who does not talk about pedophilia in a responsible way. I think he does. And we're going to have to disagree with that. We're going to have to agree to disagree with that. His Mary. entire video about pedophiles. Are I don't. Sick talks I don't about think. I don't think we're going to agree on this. I think this is a useless conversation because I honestly don't think that he's having a a bad conversation on this. I don't think that he's irresponsible. I actually think that a lot of people, and I was not the only one in that chat who felt that they related to him. I had other young people reaching out saying, I didn't realize that, that the way that adults were approaching me was inappropriate. I didn't realize that the way I was feeling was valid. So thank you. And I don't give a fuck about what anybody has to say about me platforming it because when I platform him and I got those messages, I knew it was the right thing to do. This is a person that talks about pedophilia exclusively through conjecture and shames people that don't currently feel sympathetic to him. It's not effective. It's not going to get the results. What, that is, he what, is, the, what is the rest of us doing online? What is the rest of, of Twitch left doing online? They're, all they do is shame people who, for, for having this guy, it. for interacting with him. Are this you kidding me? Him. Are you fucking kidding me? This That's all that the left does. That's all that this Twitch, the, the left of... I, I don't get, I'm sorry. I'm this sorry. This is not about the rest of the left. Okay. This yeah. But again, the, you're, you're having this standard for me when everybody else online is doing the exact same thing over no, a wide not. variety no, of views. Not. And they're I don't, they okay, are. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. They Let's are. Sure. They okay. are. And we're just going to have okay. to disagree. Look, we're I, just okay. going to I, have to agree to disagree. Yeah. All sorry. I, 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 I just I just want to say like you know I feel like we're kind of going around in circles and I feel like both of you are quite set in your positions and I don't know if if there's going to be any movement here you know there's um, probably not going to be any movement no okay no, sure. here's, this is one of the last things I want to say I think that it's really good that I want people to talk about pedophilia with stats and actual legitimate information I want them to look at the people the scientists and the doctors and the therapists who are working with pedophiles I think it's really good that I want to hold people to a really high sure. standard it's great in conversation about pedophilia and sure, I don't sure think actually that's I think that's great but when my the point of my interview is not about that the point of my interview is about his experience and his feelings and the reason why he is dedicated to these subjects. I don't give a fuck about what you have for a standard for me, okay? If I'm trying to have an academic conversation on pedophilia, I will have that conversation. I will have an academic conversation on it. But that is not what I was doing with him. What I was doing with him is getting into the, his head and getting into why he was dedicated to that topic. So you're completely off base deciding, trying to tell me how the fuck I run my fucking interview and telling me that I can't platform this guy because you, by your standards, don't think that he is doing this responsibly. I think that you're legitimizing someone who's talking about a very serious topic that a lot of people get hurt from. Um, I think you're a lot of people, him. including him. Okay, a lot of people, including him. Um, a lot of people, including a lot of people. And uh, okay. you, okay. and Let, just because just because one person is is has experience, I mean, doesn't mean that they're a monolith for the entirety of every victim of pedophilia. Right. It's nothing response. to do with what I'm saying. That has nothing to do with what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I don't understand how I'm saying, listen, you are legitimizing someone who talks about a really serious subject that hurts a lot of people and ruins a lot of lives. He talks about it in a really bad way. And I don't think there's nuance. I think he makes a very sympathetic case for pedophiles. He doesn't talk about the people that continue to reoffend. He doesn't talk about the actual methods for which to help them. He talks about child sex robots and role playing with other adults. That's not seeking help. I think 
it's very irresponsible the way he presents it. And I think that you are legitimizing this person when you have casual, fun, friendly chats and you don't push back on those things and you don't bring it up. And I think that I have every right to find that disturbing. Sure, you do. But I also have every right to not give your opinion any merit in my head. Um, I think that... um, Yes, some of sometimes he says things that are very inflammatory, and he does that on purpose. And sometimes he says things to uh, inflammatory to get attention and and to then have a more nuanced conversation about those things. But I don't think that um, you have every right to say what you want. But again, I have every right to continue to do what I want. So I'm sorry. I think we're just going to have to disagree because I don't think that he's being irresponsible but uh, irresponsible about it. I think sometimes his sometimes his optics can work can can use some work, can seriously use some work. And he knows that. But I I do not um I I, I just don't agree. I think we're just again, I think we're going to have to agree to disagree. I, okay. It, okay. I think I don't know if we're going to get any further with that. I guess, you know, I, I don't want it to like end on like a really harsh note. Like, is there any conduct outside of this, like on Twitter, that you wanted to kind of smooth over or hash out or sort out or apologize for or not apologize for? I don't know. No. I mean, I, I apologized if I inadvertently um, had people talk shit to her. I, I said that you should send me anything that you can tell came from me because I would like to personally them that i find that that's really irresponsible to ask them to not doing do that going forward I, here's the I, I thing i i don't i i i honestly i i don't care i it, like it for me to hold you responsible for every person who comes after me because you made that tweet is is just useless it, it's not it's not worth my time and people are going to do what they want to do regardless of what re- regardless of what you say to them right um, people, uh, and you can't control everybody who follows you. I know that when when a larger content creator tweets out something, that 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 there's going to be friends and fans who come after that person that is the center of that tweet. So I don't really, I don't think I hold you responsible for that. I just think it's hypocritical to be saying that you're against mobbing when what you do essentially leads to mobbing. That's all. I really don't care about like the rest of that. I think that there's um, a devastatingly (laughs) significance of difference in degree between me going, hey, um, there is a very public platforming of this person that is currently happening that you yourself promoted and that everyone can see. Um, and this is all happening very publicly. I don't know that this is a good thing. I don't think that um, I'm liking the way this is going. And a bunch of people telling Lindsay Ellis that she's a racist and should kill herself in white women's tears and all that. I think that these are very dramatically different. Um, and I think that trying to conflate them as being the same thing and that somehow I'm a What hypocrite. do you think people were saying? What, what what do you think people are saying to me after your I don't tweet? know because I really have not seen anyone say anything negative to you. Okay, so it's um all that you're a pedo sympathizer, that you are um I've been called a pedo myself. Um uh let's see. Um you can prove to me that any of those came from me or my community or after my tweet, then I would love for you to please direct. Again, to mobbing me. is not necessarily your. Uh, see, here's the thing. Again, again, I don't. I, I I can screenshot everything. I can send it to you. But again, I don't find it useful. I just think it's hypocritical. That's all that you are saying this about other people mobbing when it's probably occurring under the same circumstances. The original person doing it is not necessarily um, intending for it to get that bad, but that's generally what happens. I think that there's a world of difference between me not even explicitly saying that you're doing something and someone purposefully trying to call someone else out. Wasn't trying to call you out. Um, didn't come You were just screenshotting my chat. That's all. Yeah. The people in your chat saying positive things are not you. So I'm not coming to your throat. It's my, it's my community. It's my community. You're coming for my community. You're coming for me. I, 
Okay. So I don't even think that these are bad people is the problem here. Like with Lindsay Ellis and me and uh, Vosh and Destiny, the problem is that all these people talk about how they're evil and they're horrible and they essentialize them and they did, you know, they're this kind of person and they're that kind of person. I think that's very different than me being like, hey, this is a thing that's currently happening. I find it a little bit concerning. I think the degrees are so significant that to call me a hypocrite is a gross mischaracterization and an exaggeration. If you can say, hey, I think this inadvertently caused some problems for me, then yes, I will own that and I will make, uh, I will try to make amends to you as best as I possibly can. I don't need like, amends. You're missing my point. About you. It's about me doing the right thing. You okay. say, you know, then that's fine. Then I need to make sure that this doesn't happen going forward from people that follow me. Because you might be able to take it, but how much of it can you take? And can other people going forward take it, right? So mm -hmm. I don't want people to be harassed. It doesn't matter if right now in this moment you can take it. I have to do the right thing. So I'm okay, okay sure. doing that. But I do think that it is a gross mischaracterization to say that it is hypocritical or comparable at all to me being I like, don't think it is. hey, listen. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I just, no, it, <laughs> I'm going to disagree with you. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I I don't know if there's anything else really to discuss. Um, uh, apologies. You also that... like a lot of things that tend to be, you know, targeting other content creators. So, and you've you have not given a single example. I think you're probably talking about the tweet where someone was like, "This man's tweeting while he's getting married." But you know, I mean, I, there's I... also our relevant, right? Um, Who? Our relevant Who? a streamer. Oh, uh, laughing at the Ophelia thing? Yeah, I yeah. think it's okay to criticize that. I think it's definitely okay to criticize that. That what? That he's laughing? At, at a, a joke? joke about little girls' panties? Yeah, I think that's extraordinarily inappropriate. There's right. a time and place to actually say, hey, this behavior is inappropriate. That's I didn't realize we were joke policing here, too. So About sorry. little girls' panties? Yeah. People who, uh, people will make jokes about the worst aspects of their life. Uh, and I, and I don't think it's, a, it's anybody else's right to really. The consequence that you should watch. It's called the darkness. There's a difference when people joke about the horrible things that have happened to them and the worst parts of their life. And when there's a grown man laughing at the idea of little girl's panties. These are completely different. It's not funny. Shout out Gaz. Little okay. girl Our, hypothetical strip club is not funny. Bang. It's just not. I'm sorry. And it, it is also normal. Are jokes about like old people falling and needing help and needing to get back up? Are those funny? Like the life alert, I have fallen and I can't get up. Are those funny? I mean, if we had an epidemic of people pushing over old people, then no. Not even about pushing them over. We already do have, we actually do have um, an epidemic. When people are older, especially older women, they have um, less likely to have, um, uh, th their bone density actually gets less, right? And when they fall, they get fractures. So yes, actually it's very serious when a an older person, especially an older woman falls, excuse me, I'm going to finish my point. Um, when this, when an older woman falls and she breaks her hip, that's usually a a really bad thing and a lot of the time leads to death so and we still have jokes about it the context in which the little girl's panties thing was said was by a person who's confessed that he has sexual attraction to little girls and he was talking about a hypothetical strip club of little girl strippers baby child strippers and then when Vosh says he's uncomfortable with that the guy goes what color do you think their panties are I think that this is pretty inappropriate given the context there might be a context in which you can make a joke about little girls panties that I would be like okay that's dark humor I don't think that this context was appropriate which is why I have a problem with it is there a context in which joking about old people could be really fucked up yeah probably Probably. Are there other contexts in which joking about them falling is funny? Yes, probably. But the context that we had here, I don't think that it was appropriate, especially I, from a person yeah. who is sympathizing and normalizing, sympathizing with pedophilia without offering any comprehensive solutions for people who feel sexually attracted to children. Okay, so um, I think that's, I, that, that's wrong because... He has said they need to not work around children. They need to not be around children. They need to go seek help. Um, secondly, um, that's um, 
it's it's wrong again because I while I think Vosh had every right to leave the call, I also think that um, we can't control people's conversations and what they make jokes about. Um, and then thirdly, um, I would say that. Um, if all of this was really that big of an issue, why wouldn't you just take it up with Vosh, who's the one who put up the video in the first place? Devosh, I'm in a group chat with him, and I've said that I don't think that it was okay. Okay, but to put the video up, to keep the video up, specifically. I don't think it should still be up. Okay, all right, that's fine. Okay, um, yeah, I, th I think there's just, just some fundamental disagreements. No, hold, that on, we're hold on, I have one last thing I need to say, because... Okay. This is pretty important. It's one of my key problems here. You said that he said that they need to seek help. He has one video on his YouTube channel about pedophilia where it's one second. It's one passing line where he says that they need mm -hmm. to get therapy to help the other problems in their life. And the rest of the video talks about how they need to find an adult to role play their fetishes with, how we need to have child sex robots, and how there needs to be simulated child porn. These are things that we don't have really good like data and information about the efficacy of, and it's highly irresponsible to present that. So this comes back to like, well, he said that they need to get therapy in one passing line in a video that primarily focuses on how everyone is attracted to children and how we need to have sex dolls and child porn. So I don't want you to be able to just say that and have it hang and people think that he's this great advocator of therapy. So, right. When he has conversations with other people, though, he still makes the point that people should get therapy, that people and should not be working around. Videos. He doesn't I'm upload sorry. those conversations well, that, on that, his okay. channel. Let, let's Those, start us it respond. still matters. It doesn't. It doesn't. It, it doesn't matter if he uploads them. He has those conversations on well, face to face with other people, and he says that they need to get therapy. You are growing his YouTube channel. You are going to allow the algorithm to boost it when you and all of the people around you normalize having him on and presenting him. So other people that don't come from your communities will start subbing to his YouTube channel, and they won't see any of that because okay. he doesn't upload so the. So here's the difference in opinion. Opinion you know. that we have Merrick the difference in opinion that we've already established is that you think that he is irresponsible what? about the way that he Shut does his videos I think he's very witty and I think he's very smart and he puts a lot of production quality and he puts a lot of effort to his videos and I think I personally think I like the hard conversations that he's having um I don't think we're going to agree on this I've already said this like five times so want you to be able to lie and say oh he advocates for therapy constantly because he it's does not on his youtube channel well it doesn't matter yeah. if it's on his but youtube when every single yeah. time he has a yeah. serious conversation with somebody and he's not joking he does advocate for therapy yes what you put on your youtube channel as you're blowing up absolutely matters yes yes okay it does yes a lot of those a lot of those videos are several years old and he does advocate for therapy i don't know where you're getting that he yeah. doesn't it is one passing line in his video about pedophiles and the rest of the video is about child porn and sex robots so no this is not the character everybody okay all of his fans are saying that he does advocate for therapy <laughs> so what i don't know here what video Timestamp it please send it to me because the vast majority of his content is what matters here and when the message that you send over and over and over and over again is one thing and you occasionally slip maybe another different message in otherwise that's still not acceptable when we are talking about something as serious as raping children as being okay. attracted to children there is a responsible way to handle this discussion. And it's not every once in a while being like, oh, yeah, and maybe therapy, but never actually talking about it's not the real maybe therapy. therapy. He, he OK, so he's he he's, you know, proposing things that are like um, what's it called? Non-conventional. Sure. But he when he has a conversation a with people about. Uh, ex, ex, let me respond. Uh, sorry, let, let Solis respond. Start us go. She's been interrupting okay. me this entire time. Because when you go on, Merrick, you talk for 10 minutes. It's not one point. It's never one point. You talk for 10 minutes and you don't seem to get it through your head that I agree right. to disagree. We are not going to move our positions. You are going to stay on your position and I'm going to stay on mine. Well, there's, there's no winning in this. This is a lose-lose situation, Merrick. We're both losing here. We're wasting our time. Um, okay, again, I would say that he does, he, every time he has a serious conversation with somebody else and it's about like real life solutions right here and right now, it is about getting therapy and staying the fuck away from children. 
Well, I wish that he would actually put that on his YouTube channel and he doesn't put the conversations that he has on his YouTube channel. So none of his audience sees that. I wish that he would do that. That would be one step towards better and slightly responsible advocacy. I don't think that there's anything else. So. You, you yourself admitted that he does. It's one second of one line in an entire video. That is not enough. That's not even One second of one line? That's not, not enough? No! We're talking about- Okay. What is, en what is enough for you? I what would be enough for you? Give me a specific number. This is not how this works. I don't know a specific number of times in which you need to say, hey, you need to go get therapy, but there is a program out of Berlin. Let me see, I can look it up right here. It's called the uh, Prevention Project from Dunkelfeld. You could start by talking about that. You could start by looking at any of the evidence. And you're expecting an academic conversation when that I don't have those types of, unless I'm in a debate with somebody, YouTube I am not channel. doing those types of conversations. I'm talking about his YouTube channel. Okay. Thing about his YouTube videos. He is a okay. terrible advocate because he doesn't talk about any real world anything. He wags his fucking finger at people and goes, oh, you don't like pedophiles? You're the biggest pedophile in the room if you say you're not a pedophile. This is terrible advocacy. This is not how you change hearts. This is not how you change I don't mind. think he says that. I think that's a straw man. I but... will literally send you the clip when this is over. Okay, sure. Again, but what I would say is that he has said plenty of times that um, pedophiles need to stay the fuck away from children. He's pl said plenty of times that um, it's not about, it, it's not, and he hasn't said that it's specifically saying I'm not one of those that makes you a pedophile. It's the knee-jerk reaction that people have about we need to, we need to lynch them all, you know, that that makes him suspicious. And making scary videos where he talks about how he's sexually attracted to children and he thinks everyone else is in response to that is not a good way to go about it. Okay. I don't um, think responsible advocacy. And I, we're just talking in circles. Like, there's really yeah, no yeah. point. I, I, well, I, I'm trying to, I've been trying to end this conversation forever, but. Okay. Yeah. For, so, first of all, I, th I, yeah, I think we're going around in circles. I don't know if we're going to agree anywhere. I don't think there's any real point, points of agreement, unfortunately. I'm, I'm sorry this didn't become more of a, a friendly conversation um i just want to say stardust um obviously you know you mentioned me in the course of that there mm -hmm. um you're right you're right i should have watched your, your conversation provide a conversation with you about it i totally agree with that i was a bit flippant when you said it to me because i was just on the spot but i should have watched it before i spoke to you and i apologize for that um and um uh, and yeah i just thought it would be an interesting conversation nonetheless to put some of the criticisms to you but i should have watched it before i spoke to you you are correct about that so i just wanted to say that okay Mm -hmm. um and um yeah at, at merrick i mean like i say i'm sorry that this didn't really go anywhere kind of i think we've just kind of got to agree to disagree unless anyone's got any further points or anything else they want to add um i think we can end things there uh nope I, i'm done so thank you for this um sorry it was a waste of time for both of you but um it is what it is i kind of expected that um i'll see you guys later okay thanks all the best mm -hmm. bye-bye no hard feelings or at least not from my end. So, okay. See ya. Cheers. Bye bye.